Numbers are a critical part of the way we understand our world. In this video series, I would like to explore numbers, but not just any ordinary numbers. We are going to explore big numbers. Last time, we learned about the wickedly fast-growing Goodstein function that required a new level in the fast-growing hierarchy. This function is much faster than anything we have seen up until now, surpassing the mighty Graham's number in the first 12 steps. Today, we are taking yet another massive leap forward. And to do so, let's first talk about trees. Now, the trees we will discuss today are trees in a mathematical sense, which means they are built from nodes and branches. In the 1980s, mathematician Harvey Friedman observed a special case of the Kruskal tree theorem, which can be outlined in a sort of graph game as follows. Start with a single color. Now, draw a tree with a single node or vertex. Although simple, this is actually considered a tree. Now, still using our single color, draw a tree that has at most two nodes. Now comes the critical rule for this game. Whenever we draw a new tree, it cannot contain any of the trees that come before it. If you notice, this new tree contains the first tree and so is actually not allowed. And it turns out that if we use a single color, we can't draw any tree without it including our first tree. So we are finished. Let's start now with two colors. First, draw a tree with a single node. Then draw a tree that has at most two nodes without containing our first tree. With two colors, we can do this. Now, draw a tree that has at most three nodes, which does not contain any previous tree. We can't just draw a tree with three red nodes, because that would contain our second tree. We also can't use yellow, because that would contain our first tree. So our only move is to draw a tree with a single red node. What if we start with three colors? We can start the same way. A tree with a single yellow node. Then we can draw a tree with two red nodes. Now we must draw a tree with at most three nodes. But now we have more colors. So we could draw something like this. This tree does not contain any previous tree, which means we can keep going. This also doesn't contain any previous trees. So we continue and increase the maximum number of nodes by one each time. We can actually build several more trees, none of which contain trees that came before. The extra color gives us a great deal of freedom to keep making trees. So do we ever stop? Yes. In fact, no matter how many colors we start with, there are only a finite number of trees we can ever draw in the sequence. So we must ask, how long can this game go? Friedman defined the function tree to describe the longest possible length of these sequences. Tree one ends abruptly at just one step. Tree two continues further and terminates at three steps. Tree three jumps to a number so large that it not only dwarfs Graham's number, but it dwarfs the Goodstein function evaluated at Graham's number, or even the Goodstein function of the Goodstein function of Graham's number. This is such a stunningly large leap, it raises the question, Exactly how fast is the tree function? To get a grip on tree 3, we must return to the fast-growing hierarchy. Let's start with the Goodstein function. 
which sits around the function f epsilon null. This actually marks the end of the first region of the fast-growing hierarchy, called the Wehner hierarchy. To go further, we must enter into the realm of the Veblen hierarchy. To build a faster function than f epsilon null, we could just add 1. However, we have reached the point where simply iterating the previous function is not a fast enough leap forward. What if we jump right to exponentiation? Or even tetration? Yes, we can build a power tower of epsilon null. This allows us to move up to f epsilon 1, which is equivalent to epsilon null power towers. Following this logic, we can jump to f epsilon 2, f epsilon m, even f epsilon omega, or f epsilon null. Now this can also continue until it becomes cumbersome, and we can start using another symbol, zeta null. Zeta null is outrageously huge, with small values resulting in lightning fast growth functions. But the process can begin again here building zetas until we run out of space, and once again, requiring another symbol, eta null. We are such a dizzying height above the Goodstein function that any one of these functions can fairly quickly crank out numbers that dwarf the now seemingly minuscule Graham's number. But if we keep going, we will run out of Greek letters. So what do we do? This is where Veblen functions come in. We can define Veblen functions using the symbol phi. Phi1 gives us a nested stack of epsilons, whereas phi2 gives a nested stack of zetas, and phi3 gives a nested stack of etas. This can continue in this way for any value of phi, giving us reach well beyond the symbols from the Greek alphabet. These values get big very quickly and give us yet a new way to look at growth functions. So where does the tree function fall in this series? Well, it is faster than any of these functions. We have to instead start nesting these phi functions as well, and we can build another function, gamma null. This is also called the fiefermann schutt ordinal, and it can be expressed in several different ways, including an extension of Veblen notation. And yet, even f gamma null, a behemoth of a function, is slower than the tree function. Larger ordinals exist, with fast-growing functions including the small Veblen ordinal and the large Veblen ordinal tree lies somewhere between these functions. This is where the abstract domain of theoretical mathematics really takes over, as we are so far beyond anything we're familiar with that no other landmarks really exist here to help us intuitively understand what we are looking at. The extent to which this hierarchy continues and the depth of notation required to understand it is outside the scope of this video series. Hopefully, however, it gives you an appreciation for how massive tree three is, a giant amongst giants. So does that mean we are at the end of our journey? Have we gone as far as we can go? Not quite. I'll show you what I mean in the next video. The world of big numbers goes as far as you are willing to go. So please join me for the next video where we explore big numbers.